Welcome back to CMDA Matters, the weekly podcast of the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Chupp. You know, we've reached October and I really love this month. My wife Pam and I love the color transitions, which living on the equator in East Africa for close to 20 years, we didn't get to see there. It was always green. The cooler temperatures, the college football rivalries, even as limited as they are this year due to COVID-19. And of course, our CMDA campus groups are back together again in one form or another. All across our country, we have 325 campus groups with over 2,000 volunteer leaders who have reconvened over the past couple of months, virtually or in some cases in person as they're able. I want to personally thank those of you who are investing in student groups, whether as student leaders or faculty representatives or other volunteers who pitch in to help mentor and shepherd the next generation of Christians in healthcare. Our wonderful board of trustees met virtually for their fall meeting in mid-September with representatives from 16 different states, ranging from Oregon to Connecticut and Minneapolis, Minnesota to Jacksonville, Florida. One of the many actions they took was to approve and launch our 13th healthcare specialty section, a healthcare community that plays an increasingly pivotal role for us as patient care professionals. And these trained administrative professionals are calling themselves the Christian Healthcare Executive Collaborative, or CHEC for short. Today on CMDA Matters, I have two very senior Christian hospital leaders as my guests, one whom I've known just for the past three years, who serves in Colorado with the Colorado Hospital Association, and the other whom I've known for nearly 30 years because he was the administrator of my former multi-specialty group, Southwestern Medical Clinic, and then just recently retired as Vice President of Physician Practices from Spectrum Health Lakeland in St. Joseph, Michigan. Mr. Ben Anderson and Mr. Warren White Jr. are going to tell us all about this newest community of Christians in healthcare, Christian healthcare executives who want to bring glory to God by following Christ in all aspects of their work, by serving with excellence and compassion, by making sure their institutions care for all people, including the poor and others who tend to fall through the cracks, and by helping to advance biblical principles of healthcare within the church and throughout our world. And just in case you didn't recognize those last few statements, They make up the defining characteristics of what we at CMDA firmly believe describe Christians in healthcare who glorify God. I invite you now to listen in on my conversation with two top level hospital executives who are changing hearts in healthcare from the states of Colorado and Michigan. I am excited to welcome to CMDA Matters today, Mr. Ben Anderson and an old friend of mine, also Warren White Jr. Both of these men have been leaders in the field of healthcare administration, and both were on a leadership team that launched our very first Christian Healthcare Executive Collaborative, as the section is called it. This new section for CMDA is the 13th specialty section with engagement and fellowship and working together as leaders within a particular area of healthcare. And both of them have encouraged my predecessor, our CEO Emeritus, Dr. David Stevens, and then myself, that we should consider starting a section and attract members within the area, within the arena of uh, healthcare administration. So welcome, Warren. Welcome, Ben, to the program today. Thanks, Mike. It's a pleasure to be with you. Likewise, Mike. It's a great pleasure to be part of this. Well, Warren, you and I go way back uh, to 1993 when you became our new head honcho in administration, and I was a brand new just out of residency general surgeon. So we've known each other a long time and you've 
helped lead uh, one of America's largest Christian multi-specialty practices. And then for the last 10 years, uh, I, I guess it was a, a promotion, uh, a vice president of a hospital system. Over the last 10 years, how has it worked with having a large Christian group integrated into a community hospital system? Well, Mike, that's a, a great observation. Um, and uh, Southwestern Medical Clinic did integrate with now Spectrum Health Lakeland in uh, 2010. And it has really been a very, very positive relationship where the health system has really encouraged the group to maintain its values, uh, maintain its activities, provide spiritual care for patients, and also be involved in, in short-term and long-term missions. And so the, the original idea of Southwestern Medical Clinic of having a group practice in the U.S. Uh, as a home base for physicians and providers has continued and really has grown. So we've added members since 2010. So it's really been a great partnership between Southwestern and Spectrum Health Lakeland. And then, Ben, I got to hear your story a couple of years ago uh, when you were in Kansas as the CEO of a rural hospital, a hospital that was struggling to recruit staff, healthcare professionals uh, to your hospital. And you came up as a young executive with an innovative idea that was very successful. Tell our listeners just a little bit about what worked, because it also involves that uh, key of medical missions. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I, I spent 10 years in, in a very remote part of Kansas, most recently in Lakin, Kansas, which is the Washington Post named it the 10th most remote town in the United States which it wasn't a contest we, we knew we were in and we sure weren't trying to win it. Uh, but we were in a very, very hard to recruit to place. And we, we were known for being 18 miles west of the world's largest beef packing plant. That was our claim to fame. And so we had people from all over the world that worked there and including refugees from East Africa, Southeast Asia and immigrants from Central and South America. And, and we did struggle early on recruiting medical staff. And, and through my connections with and relationships with the Christian Medical and Dental Association, we ended up building out a model that tied together domestic and international mission work that allowed all of our, our doctors 10 weeks of paid time off to go anywhere in the world they wanted to go and encourage them to integrate as they were comfortable doing so, their faith in their work. And as we did that, built it out and really worked hard to protect the health and well-being of those practitioners and really focus on um, what really drove them, what motivated them. We started getting more doctors uh, interested in moving there than, than we could even hire. And so we helped recruit about 20 physicians to the region, uh, helping other hospitals set up the same kind of model, connecting domestic and international mission work. So now your responsibility in Colorado sounds somewhat similar in that you are trying to provide adequate staffing in rural Colorado hospitals, trying a similar model there in Colorado? We are, yeah. CHA is not a faith-based organization. And so just as Kearney County Hospital, where I was prior to, was not a faith-based organization, but I think just is leaves open the opportunity for individuals to live out their own belief systems within healthcare delivery. And so it just so happens that many of the physicians interested in practicing in hard places happen to be Christ followers. And so what we're saying is that if, if you would like the margin to do that, the freedom to do that in a healthy and appropriate way, uh, we want to make inroads for that to happen. And so we're currently consulting or helping some of our rural hospitals across the state of Colorado create safe sites. We would call them safe sites or places where they would be able to live out their faith in their work and, and tie together domestic and international work as it is appropriate within that local context. Well, both Ben, you and Warren share a number of things in common in terms of love and support for uh, healthcare overseas, cross-cultural missions. But you also independently, Ben, you with Dr. David Stevens and Warren, you with me, challenge CMDA, hey, why, why don't you make a bigger effort to welcome into the fold Christians in healthcare administration, executives, uh, various uh, administrators who run hospitals and clinics, and maybe even consider how to get them together Warren, what, what was really behind that motivation to challenge me at that time that CMDA needs to think about this? One of the things that really benefited me over the years was my membership and involvement with the Medical Group Management Association. And that is a professional association, as many people know, of uh, healthcare administrators. 
And it really provided an educational opportunity for me. I really grew as an administrator through my contacts with other individual administrators. And I thought, why not have that within CMDA where we not only share the uh, healthcare administration focus, but also share a passion and love for Christ and incorporating our faith in our work. And so really trying to find an opportunity to do that, I thought CMDA would be the perfect opportunity for healthcare administrators to come together. So that's why I began talking to you about it and encouraging it. Well, your experience with uh, MGMA, I believe it's called, you were actually chairman of the board of that organization. So uh, was that the right organization, MGMA? Yes. Yes, that's correct. So your leadership there, chairman of the board, and over time will be a a great asset to the new section. Ben, what was on your mind with Dave Stevens and even me later in terms of why this was so important? Ten years ago, when I was a hospital CEO in Kansas, I attended CMDA's annual conference. And I was encouraged by a Christian physician colleague to connect with CMDA through that conference, but I wasn't really sure what to expect. And when I arrived, I was blown away by the attendees I met, as well as the content in the sessions. It was my first exposure to people like Os Guinness or Dr. David Thompson Mm -hmm. or John Patrick. And I still vividly remember Os's Can Freedom Last Forever message and Dr. Patrick's talk on reductionism. And I Also, though, remember noting that of the several hundred attendees at the conference, I may have been the only administrator there. And it seemed like such a void, such a lost opportunity for CMDA to connect clinicians and administrators who were naturally aligned by the gospel. And this section of CMDA, to me, is designed to address that need. So early on, I began having conversations with David Stevens, saying, "What, what gives here? What a lost opportunity for the association. We've got people in positions of influence who can affect biomedical ethics decisions, who can allocate resources, who can really determine whether physicians or other clinicians burn out or don't burn out, right? And they they could be aligned well. Let's get this going. And, it, and it's taken some time, but I'm really encouraged by the work of CMDA to get it going. Well, I've been wondering uh, for one or both of you to think about and answer uh, in terms of iron sharpening iron and lessons that each one of you have learned in your different hospital systems and in terms of healthcare professionals uh, who really want to live out their faith. And of course, there are some struggles. I just had lunch today with a, with a surgeon, you know, was looking for ways to safely and appropriately be able to live out their faith in the public square. How often as a Christian in healthcare administration do you run into other Christians in the profession? You know, some of it is the contacts with which I've been working for the last 27 years and now retired, but that's with a Christian organization. And so that has really opened up some opportunities, you know, to identify and tell people about the organization I work for that has allowed me to connect with others by just saying, hey, this is the organization, this is what we do, allowed me to connect with other Christian physicians and other Christian healthcare administrators. For me, it's probably not been as hard as for some others, although I've talked to many people who go, really, can you really you know, live out your faith in your work and integrate your faith with your work openly? And so I think there is a real need out there for people to be encouraged to do that and to be able to take the risk in some cases, because there are some organizations that kind of frown upon bringing religion or church or spiritual things to work. So I think there's a great opportunity for us to encourage others to be open about that and share. Ben, how about you? Yeah, I appreciate Warren's comments. I, over the last five or six years, have found myself on a speaking circuit, a national speaking circuit with the American Hospital Association and with a lot of state associations and and sharing the story of what happened in Southwest Kansas, which is really a story of redemption. And it's a story of of unconditional and sacrificial love. It's a story of of Matthew 28, 19, and how that plays out in in Southwest Kansas. And and although I'm not overt in referencing scripture in, in these talks, um, the stories that I'm telling are redemptive. I remember I was at an American Hospital Association and a, and a woman who is, is still currently a hospital CEO in Colorado approached me after it and said, are you a Christian? And I said, well, yeah. And she said, I thought I smelled Jesus on you <laughs> when you were telling that story. And she remains, she's a, a member of CMDA and remains one of my close friends here in Colorado 
But in each case, when somebody approaches me with that, there is an undertone or a feeling of isolation. Like I didn't know there were others out there. And I'm just sure glad to know you and the feelings vice versa. And so over a period of six or seven years now, I've been doing this, I just keep these people in my phone and we keep encouraging each other and and um, sharing stories with each other and sometimes just exchanging practical professional experiences or advice with each other. And those relationships deepen. And they're now in Colorado and California and Nebraska and Kansas and Texas and, and North Carolina and other places. And so as this builds out, I just think it's there's so much value in these people getting to know each other. And there just hasn't really been a formal platform in the United States for that to happen. CMDA is about to change all that. As I've been asking others in healthcare administration over the last year since I became the CEO, I've just not run into anybody, including our local CEO of the hospital here in Bristol, just not run into anybody who's aware of any sort of a, a fellowship, any sort of gathering of like-minded uh, healthcare executives like this. What would be your vision and hope? We've heard about certainly overcoming isolation for those who are, who are like-minded, engaged with them, what would be maybe some of your other hopes and vision, each of you, for this, uh, what we are calling the Christian Healthcare Executive Collaborative? You know, my vision is to create an opportunity for people to network, to share ideas with one another, to get together. Hopefully, physically, we can begin to get together again after COVID's impact is reduced. And so, you know, my vision is really to really have this opportunity for people to connect, to create a sense of community with one another. And, you know, it's, it, this is open to everybody. This is just not administrative professionals. We want to include any kind of physician, other type of healthcare professional who's interested in administration to be part of this gathering. And it's, it's really this, you know, having this network of people that can share one another's burdens, that can share expertise, that can challenge one another, that can encourage one another. You know, that's really what I hope this will become through CMDA. Because, you know, as Ben was saying, Mike, as you've said, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities formally for people to say, hey, I want to share the spiritual side of who I am within my work in healthcare administration. So I think it's really an, an important opportunity right now. And Ben, how about your vision for this group? I frequently use term in healthcare as mission alignment, which can seem sterile or even toxic depending on its context. You know, we think about the word physician alignment and what that incites in so many of our minds when, when we think about acquisitions and, and that kind of thing. But when you think about our industry, clinicians and administrators are often pitted against each other. One's trying to provide care to vulnerable people and the other one's trying to figure out how to pay for it. And because of the perverse incentives in our system, there doesn't seem to be enough money in the right places to care for the people who need it the most. And so the two often find themselves at odds, clinicians and administrators. I think our ultimate mission as Christians is to live out the life of the gospel and have Christ live through us. Mm -hmm. And Amen. the gospel has the power to bring together people who would not otherwise interact with each other. And clinicians and administrators building trusting relationships through the association can help both parties empathize with people in the opposite roles back in their own workspaces. So maybe we don't work with somebody who we, we naturally trust in that opposite role, but at an association meeting, we run into somebody in that same position. We say, I'm facing this challenge. What could this other person be thinking through that? And it allows us the power of empathy through that. And so I think just those natural things colliding. And I think in an overseas context, the stakes are even higher. I have a close friend who, who is a missionary surgeon in uh, Northeast Africa and even an undefined place and a really hard place to practice medicine. And he got out of residency and went over there and he, he sent me a note when he got there. And, and I'll never forget it. He said, so I'm so used to when I hold out my right hand, somebody puts a scalpel in it. Mm -hmm. And I got over here and there's nobody to put the scalpel in my hand. In fact, there's no dadgum scalpel <laughs> anywhere. And I'm going and rummaging through boxes in an old room that's supposed to be central supply, looking for a scalpel and looking for gloves and looking for a mask and looking for hand sanitizer while somebody is in need of trauma surgery. He said, practicing medicine in the US, he said, is more like driving a car. Practicing medicine here, he said, is like someone handing you a junkyard and saying, build a car and build a system and find the ignition and find the key and put the gas in it. In the US, you're just handed a car with a gas card. 
And there are administrators that can support you in that. And we really need to build up the administrative capacities in our mission hospitals around the world so that we as Christian healthcare workers or organizations or leaders would be known for healing the sick really well. Mm -hmm. He just said, we really need to build up this capacity. There's not as much of a focus over here. I didn't get into surgery to build central supply systems. I get into surgery to heal the sick through surgery, and I need a partner. And so we're hoping that this association section, this check section or Christian Healthcare Executive Collaborative, really builds up the leadership capacities and the administrative roles, not as an afterthought. Somebody who, for example, can't get into medical school, let's send them through some business classes, but rather, let's take the best and brightest among administrators, among leaders, the student body presidents, the FCA presidents, let's send them through high level training here in the US and then send them overseas to back up these surgeons who are going over there risking their lives and their well being and their own comforts for the sake of the gospel. I would agree with you. That is a huge need, and that would be incredible if we could figure out how to prepare and train physicians and uh, non-physicians to serve the underserved uh, cross-culturally overseas. That's a great goal. Warren, any follow-up comments on that topic? I really want to bring up the concept of the physician administrator team. And as I think about you know what we're trying to do in creating this section, I really want us to come together with physicians and to look at how we both use our skills and abilities. You know, physicians are gifted in many ways, and some are gifted administratively. Some are not. Mm -hmm. Then you have administrators, you know, who are not clinicians. And how do we bring both the strengths together to say, you know, within healthcare, instead of adversarial relationships, that we have this cooperative, synergistic relationship, and that we really then are able to go far beyond what we could do individually. And so I think it's, it's you know, the physician administrator team, taking the physicians, matching them with administrative people is really key here. And so it, it's a much more collaborative working environment than adversarial. And I think it's important that our members think that way and begin to look at, you know, using the gifts and abilities that both have. We have run out of time. I just want to personally thank both of you for your willingness to help launch this new group. And I'm excited to see where God will take these efforts and impacting. As I said, I've traveled around this last 12 months and I've had many young people ask me, hey, do you have anything going in terms of healthcare administration? And I said, be patient. It is coming. Thanks for joining me, both of you, today on CMDA Matters, and uh, I know we're going to be in touch soon. Thank Thanks, you, Mike. Mike. We look forward to hearing the, the podcast. I really want to say thank you to the CMDA Board of Directors for their support of this section. Uh, that means a lot uh, that we have that and really want to see this grow and, and uh, really uh, thrive. So thank you to the board. I'm guessing that many of you listening have men and women who serve as healthcare executives or administrators within your sphere of influence who have great potential to be just like these two servants of Jesus. Well, if you'd like to engage or you have someone you know in your environment who you think ought to engage with the new Christian Healthcare Executive Collaborative section, you can go to or send them, refer them to our new webpage, which is cmda.org slash C-H-E-C, check for short. You can also reach these leaders directly through email by just emailing check, C-H-E-C, at cmda.org, and they will get back to you. I am looking forward to seeing the impact that Warren and Ben and the other leaders of this new section will have on healthcare, and I hope you will be a part of it. CMDA ministers to our members through a wide variety of specialty sections designed to equip and network and provide a voice for CMDA members to their particular areas of specialty or service. These sections are organized by members 
for members who desire community with their colleagues. Just a few of those sections uh, for CMDA include Christian academic physicians and scientists, Christian physical rehab professionals, Christian Surgeons Fellowship, the Coalition of Christian Nurse Practitioners, and we have a Dermatology section, as well as other sections. You can access all these sections and more at cmda.org slash specialty sections on our website. I just quickly want to mention a couple of resources that we have here at CMDA associated with our podcast today. Our own Dr. David Stevens, now CEO Emeritus, experienced the difficulties of practicing medicine overseas as a first-year medical missionary in Kenya. He ultimately concluded that actually practicing medicine in a developing country was the easier part of life and service. The harder part was governance and management, administration, recruitment of other workers, community health, spiritual ministry development, staff discipline and fundraising and other issues. There's no getting around the need for administrative skills in healthcare, both at home and abroad. You can read more about his experience, which he put in his book, Beyond Medicine, What Else You Need to Know to Be a Healthcare Missionary. You can order your copy today at cmda.org slash store or by calling 888-230-2637. A couple of resources that I think may encourage or inspire you in practicing healthcare as a Christian, you can find at cmda.org slash store. And one of those is entitled, Your Privileged Position, Walking in the Footsteps of Jesus as a Christian in Healthcare, written by Paul Gerritsen, uh, one of our former area directors, and then another book entitled Whispers, a daily devotional for healthcare professionals and their patients by our former president, Dr. Al Weir. These two are excellent devotional materials that we have in our bookstore. I definitely encourage you to check them out today. As I close today's podcast, I would call all of us together to pray for the process of filling that extremely important position in the Supreme Court of the United States. It will have significant ramifications, not just on the two cases that we currently have in our federal court system, but also for countless cases in coming decades having to do with issues of life and human dignity and compassionate care in Christ's name, issues that we as Christians in healthcare must defend and promote. May God give us judges who, like the judges God described for the nation of Israel, pursue justice and only justice. The prophet Isaiah reminds us in his book, in chapter 1, verse 17, that we must learn to do right. We must seek justice. We must encourage the oppressed and defend the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. May the spirit of the great physician empower you this week to pursue those five critical activities that matter to God as true social justice done by his servants like you in health care. One thing about CMDA members that I have observed since I joined in 1984 is that what matters to God matters to our members here in this country and around the globe. And what matters to you, our members, matters to CMDA, and CMDA matters. Next week, I'll have two guest physicians who will be talking about how they have adapted to and leveraged telemedicine during the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll see you next week, God willing. Thanks for joining us today. This podcast has been a production of the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. The opinions expressed by guests on this podcast are not necessarily endorsed by the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. CMDA is a nonpartisan organization that does not endorse political parties or candidates for public office. The views expressed on this podcast reflect judgments regarding principles and values held by CMDA and its members and are not intended to imply endorsement of any political party or candidate.